I have discussed about uh, slope stability analysis and uh, uh, I was talking about two situations. One is the infinite slopes where we did lot of analysis for different types of in infinite slope conditions. Then the second situation was uh, finite slopes and I talked a bit about in my previous module how to analyze the slopes which are finite in nature. And this is where I introduced the concept of factor of safety, you must have noticed. And that factor of safety we had defined as factor of safety associated with the friction angle and the factor of safety associated with the cohesion. And we have uh, denoted this as F phi and F c. And the problem which I solved in the class, I showed you uh, that the best possible optimal solution would be uh, when F c is equal to F phi and that becomes the condition where you have the equal weightage for the cohesion and friction to get mobilized for the soil mass. Another interesting example of uh, this concept of mobilization of cohesion and friction is uh, what is known as friction circle method. So, I will introduce today uh, the concept of uh, friction circle and Basically, friction circle method is applicable to the cohesive soils, purely cohesive soils. You know, we call it again as a total stress analysis. It is understood that the phi u is equal to 0, undrained cohesion is equal to 0, but then we will extend this concept to uh, a general C phi soil. Uh, we assume that the failure surface is a circle, part of circle, all right. We define this as arc of the circle. I introduced this concept of arc and the chord in the previous lecture also. Uh, you remember we have shown the mobilization of cohesion along the chord of the slope. So, I will explain it again today. So, in short suppose uh, you have a slope here, all right. So, this is the ground surface, this is also the ground surface. And we have been talking about different modes of failure of this slope, all right. So, there could be a situation where the slope might fail like this, typical phase failure, all right. The failure is of this block. There could be a situation where the failure might occur like this. The slip surface is passing through the base of the slope. And there could be even deep seated failures also, all right. Now, I am sure you will realize that these type of situations are going to be valid for higher C values. So, that means there could be a transition from 1, 2 to 3 as C increases. There is another interesting situation when we talk about the slope stability of finite slopes could be you know many a times people ask you a question, suppose if I rest a foundation over here, there is some facility which I want to construct. First question as a designer which comes to the mind is whether this is going to be a slope instability problem or whether this is going to be a bearing capacity problem related to the foundation of the system, all right. So, a good designer would be checking for both the situations. Depending upon what, what is the critical criteria which would differentiate between a 
shear failure which could be for the bearing resistance or which could be for the slope instability. So, suppose if B is the foundation width and if this is located from the edge of the slope at a distance of x. So, what is going to happen? If you keep on decreasing the value of x, the foundation comes and sits at the edge of the slope, one situation. And what is going to happen then? We assume semi infinite soil mass, but then you are defining that. So, that means if I say that this is a hypothetical surface and this is a continuum, if this foundation is going to sit over here, what is going to happen? I have removed this much portion. So, only this portion is contributing, it is not going to be a bearing capacity problem. The slope is going to be unstable because of this type of situation. So, that means x becomes a very critical parameter. However, if x keeps on increasing, it, be, it becomes 3 to 5 to 10 times to 20 times the value of b, what is going to happen? This keeps on shifting on the right hand side and this becomes a typical bearing capacity problem, fine. Now, extending this surface, I want to analyze let us say uh, the stability of the slope because foundation designs and analysis you will be doing in another course, not in this course. So this is a introductory course uh, for soil mechanics 2 or geotechnical engineering 2 where we talk about the properties of the soil mass and how these properties particularly the shear strength parameters are utilized for designing the systems like this. So, I am going to restrict my discussion only on the stability of the slopes which happens to be the topic for discussion, okay. So, we are assuming that this is a typical slip surface circular. It might be passing through any of the points either 1, 2 or 3. In general, what we do is we normally use graphical methods and we define a point or the axis of rotation. All right. So, point of rotation means this is the point about which the slip is going to take place. Look at the motion of my hands. Now, this is the point about which the material is going to slip off, okay. Have you come across this problem somewhere? In 10 plus 2 physics, yes, your JE, yes, correct, yeah. Have you come across this situation? There is a bowl and in this bowl, there is a small ball, simple harmonic motion. Yes, that is right. So, suppose if I drop a ball like this and this ball would be rolling down and then following a simple harmonic motion and then what happens stops over here. Similar problem, see physics of the material remains same. The material changes, this material and the ball material is different than what we are discussing over here, the mechanism remains same, okay. So, when this is the axis of rotation, I can complete the figure like this. All right. So, this becomes the included angle. Okay. So, this angle is normally taken as beta angle. Rest of the things are same. I mean, I might be having a slope of height h, you know, this angle is some, uh, you may say some theta. Normally, we take beta, you are right, but in this case, it does not matter. Okay. What are the forces which are going to act? The weight of the block and what is this block? A, B and C. This B is the width of the footing. 
yes you are right. So, this is the width of the footing. So, this is the point C through which the slip surface initiates passes through the A point. All right. Same thing I can do for any other situations also 1, 2 and 3. So, in practice you know the chances are the failure might take place through any of these surfaces. You never know correct. So, most of the slope stability analysis problems become iterative in nature. That means, you select a slip surface follow the procedure which I am going to discuss over here all right and get the factor safety terms. I did this analysis in the previous discussion. You remember when we were talking about the Taylor's chart, Taylor's stability chart correct that was also phi u equal to 0 total stress analysis. So, I might be having several situations like this you know thousands hundreds of slip surfaces very closely spaced and what is going to change? What is going to change is only the center of rotation correct. So, if you plot this factor of safety associated with this point of rotation for which there is a unique slip surface what I am going to get? I am going to get a plane in which you know you will be having different values of factor of safety associated with different slip surfaces. So, your generation is very lucky that you need not to do these things or these analysis manually, but when we were students we used to take some 10 slip surfaces we used to analyze them by following the method which I am going to discuss in today's lecture. Now, this everything is software based there are very good very potential software which are available in the market I will be talking about that also, but before I do that just let me give you some concepts and uh, try to follow the concepts. So, that you can use the softwares which are available commercially in a better manner. So, one of these slip surfaces I have selected over here as a C all right. So, in simple words or if I want to show this, this is how it will look like. So, this is A B C and what we did is uh, last time we considered this as the as a straight line so I am sorry for A C happens to be the chord. And the curved AC we differentiate it like this happens to be the arc fine. This is the axis of rotation so what is going to change if I take another slip surface just now I showed the axis of rotation in two dimensional plane is given by x comma z or x comma y. So, its location will change and beta will change yes. So, you are right. So, basically the slip surface is a function of the type of material yes and what else axis of rotation and its location basically. So, this is the location of axis of rotation r this is r all right. What else geometry of the slope? theta h and of course, the included angle beta fine. So, 
So, these are the parameters which would influence the location of the slip surface. Now, what is going to happen on the slip surface? So, suppose if I take an element over here of let us say very small length c and what I have done? I have discretized the entire arc in small small segments which are linear in nature. Linear means these are lines. Yes, so circle can be considered to be constituted of several infinitesimal sections of linear sections. What are the forces which are acting on this? Try to draw the free body diagram. So, at this surface which is let us say A and B, what are the forces which are acting on this surface? Yes, so the one is going to be C m into L, correct. What about the next force? Normal stress and when there is a normal stress, what else is going to come? There will be a shear stress. Now, what should I write here phi or something else? This cannot be the total friction angle which is getting mobilized. This is going to be phi m, that is right. So, this angle is going to be phi m. So, what is we are what is that we are assuming? We are assuming that only certain fraction of cohesion and friction is getting mobilized in the system. So, you remember the factor of safety term which we have talked about? So, suppose if I say tau failure upon factor of safety is what? This will be equal to tau mobilized. Fine. So, this will be equal to Cu under in shear strength total stress analysis correct plus sigma tan phi u yes yes upon factor of safety f. So, this can be written as C u upon f plus sigma tan phi u over f. This f is normally denoted as f c, this f is normally denoted as f phi correct and what did we assume last time? f c is equal to f phi equal to factor of safety for optimal solution. Is this fine? So, this becomes C m plus sigma tan of phi m. So, what is the relationship between tan phi m and tan phi u? Phi m tan phi m equal to tan phi u over f phi. So, this becomes tan of phi m. Now, this C m is getting mobilized in the form of C m at a very infinitesimal length of the arc and this friction angle phi m is the included angle between sigma and the shear stress which is getting mobilized. C m is coming because of the component of the cohesion which is getting mobilized on that length particularly. So, this is the basics of the whole thing. Now, what we do is we assume that the total cohesion is getting mobilized somewhere at a distance of this is the friction circle method. Let us say capital R not capital R I will say R 1 capital R will be reaction which I will be using subsequently. Okay. Now, this is the force component and what we are saying is or assuming is that C is acting parallel to A C. 
So, C force is parallel to AC. Is this part okay? And what will be the value of C? This will be equal to C m into yes, L C capital L C. Yes, so L C is equal to what? A B and this is the chord. So, that is how we are depicting it. So, what we assume is that the total cohesion is getting mobilized and its direction is known and the magnitude is going to be equal to this, fine. And it is acting at a perpendicular distance of R 1. Can I obtain now a relationship between R 1 and R and you know a C a C and a C chord R. Suppose if I take moment about this axis, what is going to happen? C into R 1 capital C into R 1 will be equal to try all these CMLCs are going to get summed up into length of correct AC. Is this fine? So, that means C value I can substitute as CM into length of chord. So, length of chord I am writing is as AC into R 1 this is equal to sigma C m into L C into A C prime or A C R. So, C m gets cancelled out because C m is constant. So, what is the value of R 1 you are getting? All this summation of small small cards is going to be What is the value? Yes, you compute it. So, no, sorry, this is going to be CM into uh, I have not taken the moment. So, you have to take the moment about this also multiplied by R value. All right. So, this is R. So, this becomes what A C R divided by A C into R. So, that means by using this concept we have obtained the point of application of capital C also. Hope this part is clear. Is this okay? So, this R 1 is nothing but the point of application. Capital C, A C chord R can be obtained, A C chord is known, R is known, I can obtain R 1. Normally, this type of analysis is done on a piece of graph paper. So, when you are plotting a section for a given slip surface, what you know is the weight, agreed? Draw the force triangle, yes. So, force triangle would be W. What are the attributes of W? Direction is known, magnitude is also known, correct, very good. So, direction is known, W direction is known and magnitude is also known. Fine, 
What else is required to complete the force diagram? The second component is capital C. You are right. So, capital C is direction is known, magnitude is unknown. Why? I do not know how much cohesion is getting mobilized, that is the reason. What is the third force which is going to balance the two? The reaction, yes. Correct? Is the magnitude of R is known? Direction is known? That we have to find out. So, what is going to happen? W direction is known, magnitude is known, C direction is known, but magnitude is unknown. R we have to obtain its direction should be known and its magnitude should be known. So, as if what you are doing is you are you know plotting let us say W, the direction is known, magnitude is not known. So, if I superimpose on this the resultant force with the known direction and magnitude the triangle can be completed. Is this fine? How will you obtain now R? That is a big question. Now, this is what actually friction circle method talks about. So, friction circle method talks about this in such a sense that R application of capital R, first of all it is going to be tangent to a circle which is known as friction circle, all right. So, suppose if I draw a circle of radius Rm, this component of R is going to be you know tangent and passing through this in such a manner that if you draw a perpendicular from on any point, it is going to pass through the center. So, if this becomes my normal stress, if this becomes the normal stress, what is the angle of inclination between R and N? Phi m. Okay. Now, what we assume is that R m is equal to some multiplier multiplied by R sin of phi m. So, this multiplier actually comes uh, in the form of a constant. Now, what is this constant? Uh, there are charts which are available to obtain the value of k. Uh, normally, k is dependent upon beta and this relationship is something like this, you know exponentially increasing uh, starting from 20 degree onwards. So, you can refer to a book and you can obtain the value of k and k is normally placed between uh, 1 to 1.2, all right and beta could be 120 degree also. So, we will obtain k value from here, multiply it over here, r is known for a geometry, phi m, what you will be doing with phi m? Remember phi is always assumed, we assumed in the previous analysis also what we did in the previous module or the lecture. So, we assume F phi and F phi you know how to obtain it and then you get F c, F c value and see whether both of them are same or not. This method is known as friction circle method. I know there is a lot of clutter on the board, but then uh, if you follow these steps, you can still understand this. So, just to repeat, 
what we have done is we have made a force triangle w direction magnitude are known c we have assumed to be parallel to the uh, chord ac its magnitude is going to be c mobilized into lc lc is known but cm is not known so for cm we have to obtain cm that means uh, knowing the direction of c we have to know the magnitude r can be obtained and once the r is obtained uh, then how will be obtaining us yes a good question so we have to do like this f i the moment phi m is known what you will be doing you can draw r value which is passing through this drop a perpendicular from this point complete this friction circle get the value of rm rm will be equal to k into r sin phi m k we will sub obtain from here rm is known correct and then once the rm is known can you not obtain the value of r capital r we can obtain capital r also so this is how we normally do this analysis fine please follow a book to read the complete methodology i hope you can solve this so when you are doing this type of problems stick to the basics take a graph paper draw the geometry of the slope compute the area of cross section of the slope and along with the slip surface get the point o get the w and rest is all uh, known to you uh, sometimes this angle beta is also defined as uh, the central angle so what will the relationship between central angle and the length of arc that you know is this not so 2 pi r upon 360 multiplied by the central angle will give you the arc length that's it so you have to just maybe analyze this type of situation so in other words weight is known what we can obtain is length of the arc is known length of the chord is known so uh, this point is known you know r1 point of application of r1 r1 is known so this is where the c is acting compute the value of cm and the moment you have cm fc will be equal to yes fc will be equal to total c over c mobilized and this c is nothing but your under cohesion 